Well, dear friends, it's a great pleasure to be with all of you today. Uh, when one looks at uh, the world um, that we are facing, it is clear that uh, the pandemic has shown how fragile the world is. Fragility in relation to the pandemic itself. Uh, uh, we have seen a first wave, a second wave, a third wave coming from east to west, from north to south. And the truth is that uh, uh, the world is not prepared. There are no mechanisms of coordination, of cooperation in order to have a common strategy to defeat the virus. And uh, uh, at the same time, uh, we saw how fragile are health systems, not only in the developing world, but also in the developed world, where we see hospitals in trouble, where we see uh, health uh, staff in trouble, where we see lack of equipment. And so, indeed, lack of investment for years and years in global public goods like health systems um, show uh, enormous fragility in our, uh, uh, in our world. And then, of course, uh, at the same time, the fragility in relation to climate, we see uh, climate change moving and uh, we see all the dramatic impacts uh, we are witnessing in so many societies with the storms, with droughts, uh, with the food security problems, with the, um, the, mel the glaciers uh, melting, the sea, sea rise la uh, increasing, and I mean, um, and the world still far from being on track on this. And at the same time, the tremendous inequalities of our world, inequalities among countries. I mean, you see how different it is to fight the pandemic in Sweden or in uh, uh, Gabon or in uh, uh, Botswana. Uh, I mean, the capacity of countries to respond, uh, the levels of debt, uh, the problems um, of uh, the, the way the, the, the world economy has been organized and world finance works um, generates huge inequalities. And then inequalities within each country, within each society among people, uh, inequalities in income, but inequalities uh, in relation to gender, to race, uh, to, to, many, uh, to many other aspects, uh, re revealing this dramatic fragility of our societies. Now, there is a blueprint to find these fragilities. It is the Agenda 2030. It was the Sustainable Development Goals. So we know how to address these problems. But the point is that, and this is the fault of my generation, even if you are able to make the diagnostic, if you are able to present a program of action, the truth is that even before the pandemic, we are off track. We were off track. Um, even before the pandemic, we were not reaching the sustainable development goals at the level and with the rhythm that was necessary. Uh, but now with the pandemic, we are moving backwards. I mean, hunger is increasing, poverty is increasing. Uh, we see plastic pollution in the world, in the oceans increasing because of the amount of plastics that are now used to protect us from the from the virus. Um, and uh, we see how well systems have been put into questions. We see education being uh, dramatically impacted and lots of uh, children out of school. So uh, we had a clear blueprint to address the fragilities of this world. But that blueprint was not being effectively implemented. And now with the COVID, we have a, a movement backwards. So this is the moment in which we need to mobilize the whole world to be able to link several things, to link the recovery. Trillions are being sent in the recovery, but they are being sent in the developed world. Not money is trickling down to developing countries. No response to the debt problems of developing countries. No response to the liquidity problems of developing countries. This needs to change. But at the same time, we need to have a vaccine to be a global public good available for everybody everywhere. And we see countries trying to grab the vaccines that are being produced for the most the richest countries in the world or for richer people in, in poorer countries. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, we see that now there is an important movement uh, for for climate action. There are several countries committing themselves to net zero emissions in 2050, but still a long way to go. We need to link all these things, to, li to link a program of recovery, uh, to make sure that all these trillions are spent in a more equitable way, and at the same time, they promote a recovery that is more inclusive, fighting inequality, and more sustainable, addressing the climate change effectively. All these things need to be interlinked, but there is lack of political will, and the youth is, is here a fantastic role to play. Because first, it's not your fault, it's our fault. It's for the fault of my generation. We had all the opportunities to address these challenges that we didn't. So um, this will impact dramatically your lifetime. Uh, so your leadership is essential. Uh, and you have the authority, the moral authority, to assume that leadership. Second, um, it is clear that when one sees today's world, the young people has been in the forefront of the fight for equality, 
of the fight for climate action, of the fight against uh, racism. And so um, we count a lot on your leadership, on your enthusiasm, on your pressure, on your advocacy, on your movement, uh, in order to be able to make those that have responsibilities to lead in the world to understand that things have to change and to change dramatically. This is a terrible problem we are facing. It's also an opportunity, but opportunities sometimes are missed. And as you know, Politicians are the best animals to transform opportunities into problems, when what we need is people able to transform problems and opportunities. So we badly need your very strong commitment. Please be bold. Don't be afraid of saying things that might be shocking. Um, assume your leadership, develop your movements, push for the things that are fair and just and necessary, and count on us to support you. Thank you very much, SG. I think you'll be very happy to know that many of our young leaders are actually working on the issues you mentioned from uh, climate action to education to peace and security. So without further ado, I'm going to pass on to our young leaders to present their one minute elevator pitch to the SG. Um, I'm not going to take the floor after one by one. So please unmute yourselves while uh, your- If I may interrupt, but I'm here to listen. I mean, don't ask me questions. Tell me what uh, I should do. Give me ideas, give me suggestions, give me proposals. Uh, present the criticism that you think needs to be presented. We, uh, I mean, uh, uh, I am here to learn. I am here to listen. No, so don't ask the, these questions that uh, you know the answer. Just tell me what you want to tell from your feelings, from your knowledge, from uh, from the way you you, you experience uh, your uh, contacts with the, the communities and the, with the world in general. Uh, what I want in this meeting is to listen from you. I mean, it's not to have, I'm not here to do propaganda for the UN. I'm here to try to make the UN change. Thank you, DSG. Uh, so we'll go the same uh, order that we had agreed before. So first I pass the floor to AY. Hey, it's an honor to meet you. I'm AY. Uh, my, my work plan's in three different phases. So first, I'm going to make an album powered 100% by renewable energy. I'm going to do 17 songs, one song for each goal, in collaboration with some of the biggest artists in the world. And then second, I'll launch and scale the Battery Tour, 17 concerts around the USA. And then third, I'll host a capacity development workshop and develop an industry guidebook that will be like a roadmap for all music artists. Now, all of these steps will be captured in a two-season docu-series to elevate the SDGs and the organizations that are making an impact for them. Now, I need the UN's help to connect to social influencers that have like notoriety, you know, to help me promote this Global Goals album. I need experts in solar power and battery storage. Obviously, I need potential donors and funders that may be interested in renewable power concerts. And I need ex experts in ESG monitoring and reporting to help me form a baseline for the music industry and create targets and indicators for how we can improve. So thank you guys so much. I am AY. Thank you so much, John Athman, and for making me a part of this. This is really, um, you're full of energy and, and inspiration because you're so constructive about what you want to do and focused. Uh, so this is really uh, music for me, starting with AY. Um, we we start we did this um, Nations United video and it was very exciting because we had Richard Curtis and a number of artists who came um, and helped us to make that video such that even Al Jazeera came along and turned it into Arabic uh, for the Arabic audience. So you know the sky's the limit when you start to convene um, and you have this 17 songs, 17 concerts, and then the workshop to tell everybody this is how you do it. Um, that 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 connects the world and that gets us all moving. Um, in a movement that just, you know, it's it's sort of like a swell, it's a groundswell, and we keep going, and hopefully by 2030, this decade, we'll get it. So I was listening to every one of you, and I thought, right, let me see, how do I respond in um, how we can help you? You have absolute access to what we can convene to do. Our UN Office of Partnerships um, have got great people in there um, who will open up that space of influencers, um, of those who can help you uh, to achieve what you have promised uh, to, to deliver on your watch. So absolutely, ESG experts, influencers, battery, solar people, we got them all. Um, and, and my commitment to you will be that our office will look to make sure that they make those connections. I think AY should get a chance to end with the music, with a tune. <laughs> That'd be so awesome, right? <laughs> 
<laughs> you can sing the question. <laughs> Save the planet. I got this song called Save the Planet. I did. I did. I did want to say, I'm, hey, I'm so thankful that you are on the call. And I wanted to say this. I noticed that uh, I think underfunded, the, like the SDGs in general are underfunded. So one huge part about my project is using music and entertainment as a vehicle to interface with companies and corporations, especially those that you know care about corporate social responsibility, and kind of plugging them in and then using that connection to impact and further the the, uh, the advancement of the SDGs through like nonprofits and organizations that do that work. So I would I would definitely love more connections for both the NGO space and of course the corporate space. And utilize their what they want when they're you know the marketing budgets and things like that to then make an actual impact on the the SDG. So that's kind of how I'm using this project, and I'd love your help for that. Yeah. Well, Ay, you finished on on a note that of course we will make those connections and. Uh, let's say you know we 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 want to see corporate social responsibility move towards changing the business model, because I don't want profits from a bad business that emits that does all the things that we don't want it to do. It's a business model that needs to change. And so anything that you can wrap for that would be fine. Thank you very much, everyone. This is a good Thank end to my PSG. day. <laughs> yes, we have also, I noted all the connections that you wanted us to make and we'll follow up with the young leaders and your office to make sure that they're connected to those partners. And thank you again for your time and also for the young leaders uh, for their time and their patience and the most important work that they are doing as well. So DSG, you can consider this group as your junior SDG advocates, um, working hand in hand with the with the SG's SDG advocates as well. Um, and yes, thank you very much once again. We look forward to staying engaged. Thank you, Jasma, for your leadership. And thank you, everyone, for sharing this time with me. Bye. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you.